now. And and again, I, th th there's a reason there why uh, it's one of the most modern and one of the most up to date uh, uh, marketing uh, incentives is 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 a USB. Now, how do you reach these uh, modern travelers? Well, guess what? There is also no immediate answer to that, and I'm going to give you the same consulting answer. It depends. There's clearly uh, something here where we where we want to understand that different travelers, and I and I lead back here to when I said create personas and, and try and look at who you're trying to target. Different personas want to be reached in different kind of ways. There is certainly travelers already in this day and age that want to be convinced about your brand or your product through TikTok, whether you like it or not. Okay, TikTok is here to stay. It's not going away. And within a certain generation, it is the most popular social media network by a country mile. And they're going to take that with them as they grow older. And it's going to it's going to turn into quite an important marketing tool, the way Instagram and Facebook for other generations have done that. OK, there's clearly an argument where where you might not reach a certain traveler for your product through TikTok. And then you shouldn't have an account there. There's no reason to do that. There is some basics, which I am no longer willing to argument or to have a discussion about or to have an argument about. And that are things like a website. If you don't have a website as a hotel that works well, it doesn't need to be flashy. It doesn't need to be top, modern, out of the box, but it needs to work. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about loading time. I'm talking about the buttons that I click are working. I can book online. I can book through your website. It doesn't take me 17 steps in your booking engine to finally click book. Okay, I, I, I'm talking about the real basic stuff. Please, by all means, it is 2023 and not 1994. Okay, so th there is no reason your website is not responsive and I can't look at it on my mobile phone. There's, there's simply no explanation. There's no excuse. Oh, we never had time. Is it really that important? Uh, you know, our, I think my website visits come from a desktop rather than my, no, no, stop with the excuses. It, I, I don't care. Right. And, and nor does your guest. If he doesn't find what he wants and he can't find it in an easy manner, guess what? He's gone. He's got enough choice now with companies like Booking.com, Expedia, Trivago, Kayak, Skyscanner. He's, he's got the world at his oyster. It's, it's all there. He can, he can close your website and go straight to Kayak or to Booking. No problem. It'll take him 10 seconds. And those 10 seconds or 10 seconds he's not going to spend on your website if it's not responsive and it takes five minutes to load a page. It's simply not going to cut it. And what helps, obviously, if the images are from you know, this century, that would be nice. If the images are back from 1984, when the last generation was running the hotel, well, guess what? It's just not going to cut it. Yeah? And, there's, and there's, again, there's enough, uh, there's enough options out there. Now, the target audiences, again, will define what is basic storytelling, advertising, and others for your personas. That's very important, right? It, this, this, this does not, there's not a blueprint I can give you and say, hey, this will apply to any product, any persona. That's not how it works. Strategy today has become extremely dynamic, especially in the online world. Checking for time. Kimberly has not screamed at me yet. 25, I think we're doing well. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay, good. Um, how to create engaging content. Well, guess what? Um, you know, do, my, my first question here is when we, when we talk about marketing strategies and the modern traveler, does he really want engaging content? Let's start with that. Does your persona look for engaging content or does he want a down to earth, nice image, a nice video where he can see and understand what's going on. Doesn't have to be flashy. It doesn't have to be quick edits of scenes. It, you know, what does he want? Give me that answer first. And then I can say, okay, for your persona, the content and the look should be in terms of, I don't know, storytelling or, or engaging, or this is an ad that I would run. So, so, so the, the, the criteria here again is who is your target audience? If you don't, and, and you can probably see a, uh, a, a reoccurring theme here. If you can't answer that question to me at the very beginning of this of this workshop, then then the rest is obsolete. Start with your basic question: Who are you targeting? And then from there, obviously, there's very cool things we can do today, right? Especially in terms of storytelling. There's great campaigns. Instagram is is continues to set the standard at the moment in terms of the innovative stuff that you can do. Um, you know, there's things like stories, highlights. There's the TikTok with its with its TikTok rushes is you know, is definitely a force to be reckoned with um, and driving stupidly high engagement and, and, uh, and reach numbers. It's crazy. Um, and, and these guys are good at what they do, right? They, you know, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of people that work at Meta, which is the company that owns Instagram and Facebook or Trison, which is the company that owns TikTok, um, that, that work there to, that constantly do nothing else but think about the algorithm, think about the, uh, the applications in the app, how to make it more engaging. So they're good. You know, they're good for a reason. It's there's there's a reason uh, about about uh, ninety percent of the uh, of the um, 
of the economic population, so people between 18 and 65 in Europe, use WhatsApp. Well, guess what? Because it's a darn simple tool and it's really helpful. And if I want to, you know, shout at my friend because he's showing up late to the dinner date we arranged, then I'm I'm right up on there and he's getting all the bad smileys I can think of. Yeah. So it's you know it's it's convenient, it's easy. Um, so 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 why not use that to your advantage when you when you write your strategy and look at the content that you want to publish? There is an elephant in the room that I haven't talked about, and this is a, a conversation that you know we could do an own workshop on on just that, which is which is a question of budget. The internet is not for free, and I will I will not get old die, and I will probably die saying this at one point. The internet is not for free, and I, and and we we need to get to a point where senior marketing managers and commercial executives of all shapes, sizes, sorts, genders, origins come to the point where they understand running an Instagram account, running a TikTok account, running a LinkedIn account, running a Facebook account, running whatever a Pinterest account for all I care is not for free. The content doesn't magically appear on the horizon. It, it doesn't, it, that's not how it works. Chat GPT is not the answer. You know, th th these things cost money. Producing a good video, creating good visuals in terms of photo assets, rushes, reels, videos, YouTube short, whatever you want to create is not cheap. In some countries, it's actually very expensive. So make sure when you bring this as an argument and when you when you sell this to your superiors, you understand and you get them to understand this is not for free, right? There is a cost element here that needs to be answered and that needs to be secured and it's expensive. You know, I, I've seen marketing budgets for, for individual hotels, privately owned, 80, 90 rooms, of, of 25, 30 K per month. That's a lot of money. That's 360 K a year. That's a lot of cash that somebody needs to earn. Okay. So, so, you know, it's, and, and it doesn't have to be 30 K per month, you know, it can be 5 K per month, but that's still 60 K at the end of the year. So, you know, make sure that everybody understands this is not for free, but the effects are massive, right? This is your business card. This is effectively how people find you. So let's make sure that it's darn sexy when they do. Okay, that's the idea. That's the reason you're doing it. And then obviously there is an element there where we want to make sure um, we want to make sure that there's a way that they are measurable. That's that's ultimately what you'll be you'll be measured by by your superiors. Set some KPIs and then let yourself be measured against them. And then you need to make sure you deliver on those KPIs. That's obviously that's obviously goes that's that obviously goes without saying. And a time frame, I think that's no news. I think that goes for any project that you do. Uh, is something that should be set. You know, are we looking at 12, at 16, um, at 18, or at 24 months? I think that goes uh, goes without saying. So here's a little vicious circle. And oh, look, I love how we've put the Hospitality Academy logo in the middle there. Isn't that adorable? Um, so here's a here's a little vicious circle that kind of defines and, and, and is something that we use here in the agency from time to time as well. So you're getting top secret information from our agency deck here um, that of, of kind of how we how we go about this. It's pretty much exactly what I've just explained to you. It's a, it's a very it's a very clear cycle. The good news is once you've done it once, there is elements here that you can reuse for another campaign, for another project. Your target audience is likely not going to change. It's still going to be the same guests. So there's elements here that you can reuse. So it's not that you need to start from scratch every single time, but this is definitely a slide that um, you know, is, is I'm sure you guys will get, I don't, I don't know what's discussed between Marie and, and Kimberly, but I'm sure there's a way you guys will get the slides afterwards. So, um, you know, this is, uh, this is definitely a slide that, that is worth highlighting because it's a, it's a very practical one that we use in, in our day-to-day -day job every, every day. That being said, I have managed to stay within 32 minutes on my clock. So I, I think I will, I will get a thumbs up. I, I do. Um, and, and I, I strongly, I wouldn't suggest this if I'm not behind it. And the fact that I'm part of it obviously kind of makes that happen. Uh, want to raise your attention uh, to the to the podcast um, where the, the the reason and this is no bullshit story and I hope you've taken away from the way that you've met me now for half an hour. I'm not really into bullshitting. Um, I'll give it to you straight. But this is this is no bullshit story. The reason we started Smack was to make the the decision makers and some of the some of the most interesting decision makers on the planet in hospitality more accessible to to a wider audience. That is that is the mission of Smack. There is no profit here. We're not getting paid by anybody to do this. Kimberly is not paying us to do this. There is no money involved here. Uh, so this is literally just a, a, a word of advice. Um, if you want to, to, to have a look at the podcast, you have the website at the very bottom. Uh, it's smack.media. And you will meet these four mostly charming individuals um, uh, who are the hosts on Smack. And we, we alternate through the, uh, 
uh, through the podcast hosting. And there is some pretty cool people on there. The QR code at the bottom of my screen will lead you to the Spotify uh, account of Smack where you can uh, you can see the episodes. I'm not going to tell you to subscribe. Look at look at an episode. Look at an episode or two and and see what you think. Um, there's some some pretty pretty big names in there. There's the the CEO of Accor, uh, one of the biggest hotel top five hotel companies on the planet. That's that's on there. Uh, there's um, there's a CEO of Six Senses, one of the most beautiful uh, hotel brands on the planet. Uh, that's on there. Um, we have the the leading hotels of the world CEO who's been with us on the podcast. And the funny thing is. We don't do like we don't do anything out of the ordinary to get them on the podcast. We're as cheeky to literally, literally find their email address, and we have some some very talented people in the back office of Smack who are very good at finding email addresses. And we send them an email and say, "Hey, do you want to tell us your story? You know, we're, we're not we don't want to interview you. This is this is not a grilling. We're not going to grill you for the financials. We just want to hear your story. How did you? you know, what are you doing? How did you get to where you are? What's your job? What tell us tell us about what you're working on? Um, so it's a it's a very easy to consume format. It's not. You know, it's not a strict interview. Here's a question. Here's an answer. Um, so, so please do uh, check that out. Um, and uh, yeah, you'll get to you'll get to hear my voice here and there, which I deeply apologize for. But uh, you know, part of the project. So, um, so do log in there, and, and and it's and it's free. There's no login. There's no there's no paywall. There's nothing. You you go to the Spotify account. You can go to the website as well to to have a look at the names on there, and then just click on whichever episodes of interest to you. Um, and this is a hospitality academy approved. I'm not sure it is, but I'm just going to say that. Um, so um, yeah, so that's kind of how it how it uh, how it pans out with the with the podcast. Mm-hmm.